Folks, hello and welcome to Math 111 Pre-Calculus for Aviation. Uh, my name is Jeff Barrows and I will be with you for the next nine weeks to guide you through the course and I look forward to doing that and being with you all. Uh, in addition to what you have read in the syllabus, I wanted to point out a couple of key things to, to get us started here this week. Uh, the first is, uh, obviously my number one priority for you uh, over the next nine weeks is to successfully complete Math 111. And let me just uh, point out what I think a couple of the key, uh, key things are uh, that you need to do in order to be successful in the course. First of all, there's a lot of reading that goes along with this course, uh, and the uh, readings are detailed in the syllabus. Uh, the point I want to make is there is no substitute for that reading. Uh, you know, you may think that uh, just hopping into my math lab and doing a bunch of problems is good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, I really hope that you'll take time to do the readings before you start working on the assigned homework problems. It's very important to understand the concepts of this course and understand the uh, the, the, the new language, so to speak, that goes with this course. So uh, again, please make sure you're taking time to go through the readings very carefully before you start doing any written work. Uh, once you start getting in, even if it's in the reading or once you start getting into the written work, if you have questions, please never hesitate to ask. Uh, as I say here, your questions are valuable to not only to you, but they're valuable to your classmates and they're valuable to me so that I know where there are problems out there. Uh, and I don't want you, I don't want you stuck in uh, getting hung up uh, so that you're not progressing uh, as necessary. Uh, each week, uh, I will have a, an introductory message for you on the home page in Canvas right here. So please make sure that you are taking a look at those and also make sure you're looking at your email a couple times a week uh, to make sure you're not missing any uh, key information that I need to pass along to you. Within the uh, grading criteria for the course, there's a couple, uh, couple of groupings that I want to mention here. The first is your weekly discussion posts. And as I mentioned here in the first bullet, uh, there's going to be sort of a mix here of group discussion posts. Those will be during uh, modules or weeks three, four, six, and seven. And then uh, during the balance of the uh, the weeks one, two, five, eight, and nine, you will have uh, individual discussion posts. Uh, and let me uh, just before I go any further here, let me say that uh, for modules two and eight, you'll be turning those in through Turnitin, well, which is available in the course. Uh, what I also want to point out here real quickly is uh, once you start getting into or for the individual discussion posts, what I will do, uh, I will uh, I will put a a little video of some sort uh, within each one of those weekly discussion posts uh, that I have for you on the home page, not to not to show you how to do the discussion post, but show you how I would uh, set it up in order to receive full credit. And hopefully that kind of that framework will be helpful to you as you go through those discussion posts. Uh, once you uh, once you make your post on the discussion board uh, within 24 to 36 hours, I will typically have those graded and reviewed for you. Uh, I should say review, not not graded. I will tell you though, uh, in my review, uh, whether or not you have received full credit with the work that you have done, or if you need to do additional work in order to receive full credit. And I will be very explicit on what it is you need to do in order to uh, to you know to clean that discussion post up, so to speak, so that you get full credit. So a point being here, within 24 to 36 hours, please. Uh, take go back to the discussion board, take a look to see if there's any feedback for you there that requires additional work before the assignment closes out. Uh, midterm and final exams, two key points here. Number one, first is those are going to be taken through my math lab and the in terms of prep, you know, the readings that I mentioned right up front along with the homework are the best uh, tools that you can use in order to prepare for your midterm and final exam. There's two components to your final exam. There's the, the, the electronic portion that you'll do in my math lab. And then uh, the, uh, the second portion is the written work that you have done as you have gone sort of gone through the test in my math lab. Uh, for each one of the assigned problems, you should be writing those problems out uh, just the way you would if it was, this was an in-class course and you were handing me a paper when you walked out the door. Uh, that written work must be submitted to me through a Dropbox in the course within 30 minutes of finishing your exam. And uh, the, the key point I want to make here is uh, that please make sure that when you're, as you're going through and you're doing your written work, please make sure that it is legible and organized because once you submit it, uh, I will give you partial credit where deemed uh, appropriate uh, if you miss a problem in my math lab. So if the work you know, if there's a lot of great work uh, that you have submitted to me uh, through the written assignment uh, that 
warrants credit, uh, I will certainly give you credit for some portion of the problem. Uh, you know, typically as students will make a, a, a small error right up front or right at the beginning of a problem and, you know, when you're, when you're putting in, uh, putting in your answers to my math lab, you're either going to get all or no credit. So, uh, but if the, if the written work substantiates some amount of credit that you're, you have deserved for that problem, uh, I'll be happy to give it to you as long as your written work is legible and organized. But again, the key point here is that that work needs to be submitted to me within 30 minutes of you finishing your exam. So make sure before you start the exam that your, you know, that your scanner's ready and you can scan the work and you can get it to me uh, in order to get full credit. And then uh, once you have finished the exam, typically within a couple of days, I'll have all the exams graded. You can check back and look at uh, my feedback for you on your exam. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And so to close this up here, I, you know, I offer this little, uh, this, uh, some, some encouragement here at the bottom. Uh, you know, I know that most of you, maybe some of you are not real big math fans and I get that. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't have fun here. And, uh, the, you know, the way that you have fun in a course like this, when it's not something that you like, uh, obviously it starts with a lot of hard work. And, uh, uh, you know, as I said, uh, the best way to get started on that is to go through the readings each week very carefully. And that'll set you up well uh, to start working some of the written work. Uh, I promise you that if you work hard, you'll learn. And if you are learning, that you will be successful and we will have fun. And again, it is as important as it is for me to ensure that you're learning, I want you to have fun while we're doing this. So, uh, you know, if you're willing to put in the work, I, I'm very, very certain that you are capable enough uh, to do very well in the course uh, with, uh, with some hard work. So, if there's anything I can do for you, uh, please never hesitate to let me know, and I look forward to working with each of you over the next nine weeks. Take care, and uh, good luck.